I'm Mr. Richmond. This is your Integrated Math 2, Unit 4.4 and 4.5 Lesson Summary. I um, went ahead and put the 4.4 and 4.5 lessons together um, because some of the problems you'll run in the test are going to use topics from both these sections. Uh, also, Unit 4.5 focuses mainly on the proof of the Pythagorean Theorem, something that you probably all know already. Um, I'm not going to go over the proofs directly to do those. They're kind of long and it's kind of more of a group activity for us. Um, that you're going to have to kind of do in class out of your book and refer to there. I'm just going to really summarize what you get out of that, which is the Pythagorean Theorem, which states that if a triangle is a right triangle with side lengths A, B, C, and C being the longest side, the hypotenuse, then this formula here, this equation here is always true. The side length A squared plus side length B squared equals C squared. And you've done this before when you were looking at distance formula. Um, the converse of the Pythagorean Theorem is that in reverse, of course, stating that if the side lengths of a triangle uh, work out in this equation, so that a squared plus b squared does exactly equal c squared, uh, then a and b are the lengths of the legs of the right triangle, and c is the length of the hypotenuse. You can use this if you don't know if something's a right triangle, but they give you some side lengths, um, and maybe you don't know if this is a right triangle. You can actually plug it into the Pythagorean theorem, and if it does work perfectly, then you now know you are dealing with um, a right triangle, uh, which is nice. So again, make sure you know this. Definitely not something we can forget. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, so that kind of summarizes lesson 4.5. Um, we are now going to be using that in addition to some of the things we learned here in, in 4.4 to find the missing side lengths in a right triangle. Um, to do that, we're going to need to know a geometric mean. Geometric mean of two positive numbers, A and B, um, is such that you have this ratio. Um, side length A over X equals that same side length X over B. Um, when you go ahead and work out the cross multiplying here, when you do a geometric mean, you end up with X squared equals A times B, or if you were to finish uh, solving this and get X isolated, X equals the square root of A times B. And some textbooks show it that way, that the geometric mean of two numbers is the square root of the two numbers multiplied together, A times B. The reason why we're showing you that is in the book we're going to show you several theorems involving um, a right triangle with an altitude. Um, and an altitude is basically a 90 degree angle segment coming off of a side. And that just gives you another potential height in a triangle. Um, that, that's what an altitude is. And there's several different theorems in there regarding altitudes. Um, one states that if an altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, so I took um, the angle, the right triangle angle, and drew an altitude towards the hypotenuse. Then the measure of that altitude is the geometric mean of the two hypotenuse segments. That's one of them. And there's also one that states that if you have the same situation, then the, it creates three different similar triangles. Um, both of those are useful um, on their own, can be used to solve these completely. So I'm not going to go ahead and show all of them because they are so similar. But make sure you look at the book and see some of the subtle differences between those. I'm going to focus mainly on this one and then use Pythagorean Theorem to help me solve really any situation that is similar to this. So here's our problem. I have a right triangle here with side lengths Y, Z, and this full length here. That would be my largest triangle in the diagram. Um, which is actually 22 for the hypotenuse. 7 plus 15 is 22. Um, but then I also have this altitude, which breaks it up into a couple different triangles. I have this smaller one comprising of side lengths y, x, and 7. And I kind of have this more medium-sized one comprised of 15, x, and z. And I can use this theorem here to kind of get me started and find one of the lengths, and then from there use Pythagorean theorem. I can also set up a bunch of different similar triangles and use ratios there. So I'm going to kind of show both and let you kind of decide what works for you. The difficult part with the first one I'm going to show you is you have to have that ability to kind of move shapes in your mind and in your head and kind of get them situated in the same place. Now you've done rotations and transformations and translations and things like that, so it might not be too hard to do um, visually. Um, so this here is also a right angle, since that altitude's right angle, it's a right angle on both sides. So I have one kind of small triangle here, and I'm going to try to draw them so they all have the, the same look as this large triangle. Just to give you a visual of what we're looking at. So I'm going to actually draw the full large triangle that we have, but I'm only going to put the side lengths um, regarding the large triangle. So there it is. It has this height here of Y. It has this base of Z. And the hypotenuse is this longest side, 7 plus 15, which is 22. So that's kind of the large triangle in the problem. I also have this small triangle 
but I want to kind of turn it and rotate it so that it looks like this. And my right angle is here, and my altitude is here. So I want to continue rotating this shape until my altitude is going straight up and my uh, right angle is opening to the right. So if I imagine that kind of rotating there to make a similar triangle, the side length x should become the altitude. The side length 7 should rotate down and become the base. And y is opposite that right angle and becomes the hypotenuse. Now if I look at this medium triangle, um, very similar. Um, I have the side length 15. I have kind of my altitude x, although 15 could be an altitude 2, and z. And I want to kind of transform this um, in, a, in a similar way. And so I'm going to take that shape and I'm going to rotate it this way and make it similar. And I'm going to call that my medium. Now, I kind of drew them all looking the same here, but you get the idea. Um, so I'm going to rotate it, which makes my altitude 15, makes the bottom of my triangle x, and it makes the hypotenuse z. And again, I just kind of took that and rotated it up. And so now that I've broken it into the three similar triangles, you can start to write ratios um, for it based on what you see here. Um, the key thing is to remember is you can't solve for two variables in one equation uh, very easily. So always try to stick to one variable. So look for setting up ratios that will only use numbers and one variable. Um, and that's where it can get tricky. So what I suggest is using this statement here, which, said, which says basically that the altitude um, connecting a hypotenuse and a right triangle x is equal to the geometric mean of its side lengths. So that would mean 7 over the altitude x should equal that altitude x over the other segment that helps create that hypotenuse. Um, and that should kind of get you going. And if you look and compare the small and medium triangle, you could have set up that proportion here as well. The base 7 over the base of the other triangle x equals the altitude of the small triangle x over the altitude of the medium triangle 15. And so I could have set that up the same way I was setting proportions uh, this entire chapter. I can now use that to solve for x. x times x is x squared. Um, 7 times 15 is, I believe, what, 105? 105. And then I'm going to take the square root of that and get the square root of 105. And the problem with square roots for you guys now is we haven't touched on how to simplify these much yet. And so just leave it like that because that's an exact number. It, it helps it be more, uh, my final answer would be more exact, more correct, not have so much rounding error at the very end. And then once you've solved everything, and, um, you can use your calculator and kind of change that square root to a decimal if you like. But for now, let's leave that. So it's the square root of 105. I can actually go back now in all my little diagrams and change it to that. Now that I know it's root 105. And from here, I could set up another proportion if I like, if you really like the proportions. But since most of us know the Pythagorean theorem, are probably pretty comfortable with the Pythagorean theorem, I can now use that to kind of finish solving. If I look here, I have two sides and a hypotenuse, so I can use my Pythagorean theorem to solve for y, and I can use my Pythagorean theorem here to solve for z. Um, and that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to try that. So I'm going to do it for the small triangle first, and the formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So setting that up, I would get 7 squared plus the square root of 105 squared equals y squared, because my hypotenuse side, c, is where in the position of y. And just so you see, I'll kind of write that above there. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And I just plug the legs in and hypotenuse it. Now I'll simplify that. 7 squared is 49. When you square a square root, you're basically, it's so the inverse of it, so you're basically canceling out that square root. So 49 plus 105 is what I end up with. And 49 plus 105 is 154. And then if I take the square root, I get that y must be the square root of 154. And again, I could go in now and replace all the y's in the problem 
with the square root of 154, and solve for z. And I have two choices. I could do the Pythagorean theorem here in the medium one, because that would give me z, or I can kind of use it backwards and get z this way. I'm going to go ahead and just stick to the middle one, keep my same general format, and now plug in my answer for y, and go from there. So I'm going to again use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Using the mini, uh, middle triangle, the medium one, I'm going to make a 15. I'm going to make b square root of 105, which needs to be squared, and z will go in my c spot. Now I just have to solve from there. 15 squared is 225. 105 squared, is, or root 105 squared root uh, is 105 equals z squared. I'm going to add those together. 225 plus 105 is 325, and another 5 is 330. And I take the square root of both sides. Again, to undo a square, you take the square root, inverse operation. And I get square root of 330. And now, I have all the answers for the missing um, values. I have x, y, and z. And this is in exact form. And for now, until we learn how to simplify roots in this class, your teachers will probably accept that. Some might ask for it in decimals. So if they do, no problem. We'll go ahead and find these as decimals and we'll round them to the tenth place, one decimal place. So I'm just going to enter square root of 105 and that is 10.24. So I'm going to just round that to 10.2. Square root of 154 is 12.4 when rounded to one decimal place. And the square root of 330 is 18.16, which rounds up to 18.2. And just like that, I have all three values of that triangle. Um, again, it can be you know, a complex problem in the sense that you're putting a lot of stuff together, but there's also many ways to attack it, many ways to check and make sure your answers are, uh, are correct. So just take your time and kind of work through it and, and don't give up and, and attack from different ways and you should be good. Um, but the biggest thing to get you started is try to break them down into um, similar triangles or memorize this altitude theorem so you kind of know um, how to set up the beginning length to find the altitude. Because once you have the altitude, it's just using the Pythagorean theorem. I hope that helps. Um, good luck and thank you.